Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the specialized excitatory and conductive system of the myocardium. The specialized and excitatory system of the myocardium contains five different structures. The first one which is the sinoatrial node, the second one which is the internodal and interatrial pathways, third one atrioventricular nodes, fourth one atrioventricular bundles, and finally the fifth one which is the Purkinia fibers. We're going to discuss everyone from these structures. For the first structure which is the sinoatrial node. The sinoatrial node is the pacemaker of the heart in normal conditions. In physiological conditions, the sinoatrial node is the pacemaker which produces the heart beat. It exhibits automaticity of the heart and generates an action potential at a higher rate than the atrioventricular node and his porkinia system. The sinoatrial node is also located in the superior posterior lateral wall of the right atrium and it has an ellipsoid shape. It also contains P cells that does not have constant resting potentials. The membrane permeability of these cells are permeable to sodium and calcium during diastole and they stimulate an inward calcium current during an upstroke of an action potential. So this was the sinoatrial node. For the second structure we're going to be talking about is the internodal and interatrial pathways. These nodes and pathways are located between the sinoatrial node and the atrioventricular node. For the third structure we're talking about is the atrioventricular node. The atrioventricular node from its name is located between the atriums and the ventricles. It simulates an inward calcium current during the upstroke of an action potential, which causes a delay in the action potential with about a 0.1 second delay. For the fourth structure we're talking about is the atrioventricular bundle. The atrioventricular bundle contains intercalated discs, gap junctions in the bundles. They are also divided into two branches, left branches and right branches of atrioventricular bundles. And finally with the last structure which is the fifth one in the specialized excitatory and conductive system, the Purkinia fibers. The Purkinia fibers are distributed into the endocardium. The endocardium is the inner layer of the heart. It causes ventricles to contract from bottom to up, pushing the blood out to the top of the heart. Okay, and now for the phases of the sinoatrial node action potential. We're going to show you now a graph that has the records in these figures which are idealized for the potassium currents, sodium currents, calcium currents and pacemaker currents. These currents are through potassium, sodium, calcium and they pass through non-selective cation channels or specialized channels for these specific ions. For autorhythmic cells, they exhibit pacemaker potentials. If you dissolve an embryonic heart into an individual cell type with trypsin, and this trypsin is an enzyme that destroys the protein glue between the cells, and you put them in a plate, you're going to find that these cells in the dish will have something called myocytes, which beat independently, so every cell has a different beat than the other. So this is the function of the sinoatrial node, which is the pacemaker cells, that it forms one beat for all the cells together at one time to have a, a rhythmic beat. For the modulation of the pacemaker activity to decrease the heart rate, it is made by three things, by the prolonged slow depolarization, hyperpolarization which causes a more negative resting membrane potential and the positive shift in the threshold. For the myocardial conductivity there are two to three days in vitro the myocytes form an interconnected sheet of cells called the monolayers that beat in a uniform. The pores or gap junctions between these adjacent touching cells open, making their cytoplasm interconnected. These gap junctions ensure the synchronous activity of the connected cells. 
For the myocardial conductivity, it's very needed for an efficient pumping. For the atriums, the atrium contract contractions precede the ventricles contraction. This is caused because of the, because of the atrioventricular nodal delay. The impulse travels rather slowly through the atrioventricular node, which takes about 0.09 seconds, and then penetrates part of the atrioventricular bundle, which takes about 0.04 seconds. And this is the cause of the delay of the atrioventricular node. And both atria and ventricles should contract as a unit. So the impulse spreads so rapidly through the conducting system that all myocardial cells in the atria and ventricles respectively contract about the same time together. So this was the topic for the myocardial conductivity and excitability specialized system. Thank you very much and hope to see you soon again in the next video.